a scandal on a Chinese airplane, a promise to Taiwan, and new video game regulations. That and more on this week's China Uncensored. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. This, for some reason, is one of the most trending stories about China this week. Truly worthy of international headlines. A pilot of Air Guilin let this woman sit in the pilot seat during a flight so she could take a selfie. The selfie went viral on Weibo, basically China's version of Twitter. Which is apparently as much of a dumpster fire as our Twitter because people freaked out. The airline fired the pilot for potentially putting all the passengers in danger. Of course, he can still go get a job with another Chinese airline. But I really don't understand what the big deal was. I mean, the co-pilot was there in case anything went wrong. And now to Canada, where Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's party recently won re-election. And you know what that means. A gentle reminder from Chinese authorities to release the CFO of Chinese telecom giant Huawei. We urge the re-elected Canadian government to seriously treat China's solemn stand and concerns. And immediately release Meng Wanzhou and bring the China-Canada relationship back on track by taking real actions. Meng Wanzhou is the Huawei CFO and daughter of Huawei founder. Aww, it's a family business. She was arrested at the end of last year on charges of violating U.S. sanctions on Iran. And the Chinese Communist Party still hasn't quite gotten a grasp of how this whole rule of law thing works. Canada can't just release Hmong as a favor to China. That would be a scandal. And Justin Trudeau doesn't need another scandal. The Chinese Communist Party is saying it will fully respect Taiwan's way of life after it inevitably takes over. And for some reason, people are scoffing at that. I don't get it. The Communist Party promised it would respect Taiwan's way of life, just like it promised in Tibet or Hong Kong. Speaking of places where everyone's rights are upheld, Xinjiang. Uyghur women there are getting sterilized and sexually abused in the Chinese regime's internment camps. And if you're not in an internment camp, the Chinese regime will just assign a strange man to come and sleep next to you in your home. I really don't get why Taiwan would be nervous about being part of the People's Republic of China. So the abuse of the Uyghur Muslims may sound pretty horrific, but the Communist Party is working on improving the situation by paying Facebook and Twitter to spread anti-Muslim propaganda to justify its actions in Xinjiang. That's according to reporting from The Intercept, and this one from BuzzFeed News. Now this story broke back in August, but it's still important to talk about. So what happened was essentially this. Chinese state-run media, including my personal favorite, The Global Times, would pay Twitter or Facebook to promote their posts. Posts specifically about how those internment camps for Uyghurs are actually wonderful vocational education and training centers. Here's a video from the Global Times editor-in-chief. This means vocational education and training centers established to help people avoid extremism by calling them mass detention camps. Wow, I had no idea. I'm glad social media giants accept money in exchange for getting this message to hundreds of millions of people. Now, Twitter has said it will no longer allow that. Facebook still allows it. Some good news for the Chinese Communist Party. The NGO Freedom House has, for the fourth year in a row, awarded China the dishonor of being the world's worst abuser of internet freedom. I believe the award looks like an Oscar, except it's Al Gore in handcuffs. Because Al Gore invented the internet. And so he's in handcuffs. Anyways, congratulations. The Chinese Communist Party would like to thank the Academy and also God. Wait, I'm, I mean Chairman Mao. And finally, China has put a curfew on video games. Users younger than 18 won't be allowed to play games between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. And only for a maximum of 90 minutes on weekdays and three hours on weekends and holidays. This is also part of Xi Jinping's push to combat poor eyesight in China. And thus, all problems in China 
have been solved. And that's it for this week's China News Headlines. But before I go, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing to the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Frankie asks, how can I support the Hong Kong protesters, the peaceful ones? I can't really share on social media because of my work, and I support your channel and once supported the Hong Kong Free Press, which is the only way I could come up with, even though it is indirect. Foreigner living in rural Japan. Glad you want to help. And I can tell you that means a lot to the people of Hong Kong. So if you don't want to talk about Hong Kong on social media, you can always talk to people face to face. Especially in Japan. I know people are concerned about the Chinese Communist Party's influence. Japan is definitely a target of the regime, so I'd imagine people would be pretty open to hearing about what's happening in Hong Kong. You can also find resources online, like this recently updated Reddit thread with many ways to help Hong Kong protesters. We'll put a link to it in the description below. But it's a good question, so I'd like to open it up to everyone. Brainstorm some ideas and leave your comments below about ways we can all help the situation in Hong Kong. Maybe we can all do a little bit of good together. Thanks for your question, Frankie. And thanks to everyone for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.